Next, we'll have Shannon on the stage. So globally, 35 to 40 gigatons of CO2 is emitted every year. Now, a lot of the time people will ask, okay, but what does that look like? So let's try to put things into perspective. So we know that one gigaton equals one billion tons. One ton is approximately 2,200 pounds. So that means that one gigaton equals 2.2 trillion pounds. Now the average person, that's 180 pounds. So when we're looking at 40 gigatons of CO2 emissions in human weight, that's the equivalent of 490 billion people. Now, 50% of that is staying in the atmosphere. The other 50% is being absorbed by the land and bodies of water. So right now, there's approximately 3,300 gigatons of CO2 in the atmosphere. There's about 12,500 in the soil and forests, and there's actually about 38,000 in the oceans. Okay, so when we're going back and we're thinking about the equivalent weight of people, we know that one gigaton equals the weight of 12 billion people. So if you think about it, the ocean is holding 38,000 gigatons of CO2. That's the weight equivalent of 465 trillion people. So I think part of the problem of understanding this is no matter if we're using something that we understand, like a person, the numbers are so exorbitant that it's hard to fathom. But let's talk about how gigatons relate to PPM, or parts per million. So gigaton is a unit that we use to measure the weight of gas. PPM, or parts per million, is a unit that we use to measure the concentration of a gas. And so when it comes to CO2, one PPM equals 7.8 gigatons of carbon dioxide. And by that I mean every time we're emitting 7.8 gigatons of CO2 into the atmosphere and it stays there, the concentration of CO2 is going up one ppm, okay? So knowing that, let's look at the historic trends. So this is a picture of the last 800,000 years. And here you can see, roughly, we've been under this 300 ppm mark. So that means for every one million particles of air there are, 300 of them are CO2, so 300 parts per million. Now you'll notice here, over on the far right, is this drastic spike. So let's just zoom in on the last thousand years to give you a better understanding. Again, pretty much stayed under 300 ppm until 1911. And that's when we crossed that threshold. And that was because the world was becoming more and more industrialized. And ever since then, it's been rapidly increasing. So zooming in here even further on the last five years, I just wanted to show you annual CO2 atmospheric trends. So every single year, between the months of June and September, the atmospheric concentration of CO2 actually decreases. And that's because the plants of the northern hemisphere are growing and they're blooming, and so they're actually absorbing CO2 out of the atmosphere. But then in the fall, they start to decay, and that CO2 gets emitted back into the atmosphere. So naturally, you do have these peaks and valleys. The problem is we're emitting more CO2 than these natural processes can keep up with. And so bit by bit by bit, every year, it keeps creeping up. Okay, let's look at important PPM milestones. So one I want you to think of is this year, we reached a record high concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. On June 4th, we reached 424.87 parts per million. Now experts say, if we surpass 450, that means we're gonna surpass the 1.5 degrees Celsius temperature increase that the Paris Agreement is concerned about. And so experts also say that we should try to shoot for getting down to 350, at least. And I say at least, because once we dip below that 350 mark, things are gonna start 
just start to stabilize again. However, to be safe, they actually say ideally we should get down to the pre-industrial levels of 280 ppm. And I want you to think of ppm as Earth's thermostat. Okay, so what I'm talking about, if we surpass 450 ppm, we're gonna surpass that 1.5 degrees Celsius target. That's because the more greenhouse gases there are in the atmosphere, the ppm goes up. Earth's temperature goes up. The, true is, or the truth is actually if we have too little greenhouse gases, ppm will go down and Earth's temperature will go down. So it's the Goldilocks syndrome. You don't want too much. You don't want too little. But currently we're sitting at 420 parts per million. Like I said, experts want us to get down to at least 350. That means we need to get down 70 ppm. And if you remember, we said that one ppm equals 7.8 gigatons of carbon dioxide. So if we need to get down 70 ppm, that means we need to remove at least 550 gigatons of CO2. Okay, so to wrap this up, I highly encourage everyone to go to Clever Carbon's website, clevercarbon.io, and also follow our social media. There we're gonna provide you more information about PPM, data, and trends. But if there's one thing I want you to take away from this, it's that PPM is a key metric for monitoring climate change. And we need to reduce and remove as much CO2 from the atmosphere as we can as quickly as we can. Thank you.